uh, as per more than a webinar or a technical session uh, today it will be like a knowledge transfer session uh, which i have gone through in my uh, career and professional life uh, so far uh, to all of you uh, today the topic will be going to be the uh, testing and validation uh, the brake system for heavy commercial vehicles uh, i'll just uh, move on to the next slide uh, today the agenda will be going to be the this thing uh, first of all uh, who can take up this course uh, this the, the course is open for uh, all the students who are uh, currently pursuing their uh, automobile engineering mechanical engineering or uh, post graduation under graduation anything our diploma students can also uh, uh, take up this course and also the fresh graduates who are uh, who are just uh, passed out in the year 2020 uh, can also take up this course and uh, experienced professional uh, who uh, who are aspiring to uh, continue their domain or change the domain into the vehicle testing uh, or uh, vehicle validation or vehicle certification homologation can also uh, take up this course uh, then why brakes are important uh, these are the uh, highlighted points which will be i uh, shall which i am going to detail in all the continuous slides i'll just give you a brief intro of uh, each topic in this slide uh, next we'll be going to check up on the uh, why brakes are important yes a small intro about what is brakes why it is important in a vehicle and uh, the key factors determining or the requirements of a bra uh, efficient brake in a vehicle then comes the brake system for heavy commercial vehicles in a heavy commercial vehicle what kind of brake system is being used and uh, wh why it is preferred over other braking system and what are the key uh, components of the braking system uh, in a heavy commercial vehicles the working function principles of the uh, brake system used in a heavy commercial vehicles then comes the technical insights of brake testing we'll be getting deep uh, much more detail into the brake testing uh, requirements or the safety criteria which has to be taken into account while brake testing. This will be covering in the technical insights on brake testing. Then comes the homologation and vehicle certification. This being the key uh, or the important topic in this whole webinar where how the vehicle is homologated and the uncertified and the law and, and it is commercially released on the uh, market and, the, and run on the roads. Uh, we'll be uh, going through the uh, standard regulation and the test procedures uh, and what are the static and dynamic tests which has to be performed in the vehicle according to the brakes uh, when coming to the brake. It will be an overall session in the homolo homologation and vehicle certification part. Then comes the skill set for a vehicle test engineer. What are the key skill sets and the technical uh, stuffs uh, or the uh, uh, key technical knowledge which will be requiring for a vehicle test, uh, test engineer to succeed in his career? Uh, I'll be just going through the things which I have been through in my career and uh, what are the I'll also share the same with you all people then comes the career progression and job opportunities here we'll be going through the uh, job opportunities in the comp uh, companies or the testing authorities what where you can uh, fit for a job as a vehicle test engineer and the career progression in your life uh, when you are entering as a trainee or a junior engineer in this vehicle testing uh, domain then comes the Q&A session uh, after completing all this thing, uh, there will be a, a small Q&A session where you can uh, raise up with your questions and I'll try to answer uh, as many questions as it is possible. I hope uh, this webinar will be uh, will be at least uh, will be useful for everyone and, and at, the, at the end of the session, I hope uh, everyone will be taking away uh, at least a one topic or one single uh, uh, stuff or uh, knowledge after this webinar. Then, then here comes why brakes are important. Actually, what is brakes and uh, what is a braking system and uh, why it is very important in a vehicle, any vehicle. Uh, uh, let's see from a two-wheeler, a four-wheeler, a three-wheeler, and then comes to the uh, heavy commercial vehicles. Uh, generally, brakes are the control component of a vehicle where the uh, vehicle comes to a stationary position in a very controlled manner. With, uh, even though engine improves the performance in the right and uh, quality and the power, uh, we need a braking system which uh, uh, which takes the vehicle to a halt condition without uh, with 100% efficiency. Then, uh, then uh, coming up to the brakes, the most important factor is the active safety component of a vehicle. What is active safety? Active safety component is nothing but the uh, Yes, a safety feature in a vehicle which prevents the uh, passengers and the vehicle or the goods uh, inside the vehicle uh, prevent, preventing it from occurring into an accident. Uh, actually, the safety feature uh, is uh, 
broadly classified into two things the active safety and the passive safety the brakes are uh, are generally classified into the active safety component then uh, these are the i hope uh, you're going to share uh, visible my uh, three important the four important uh, requirements of a good brake or a 100 percent efficient brake is that it has to uh, haul the vehicle or uh, stop the vehicle within a minimum stopping distance uh, such that it should not uh, go beyond the position where it has to stop or it should not stop before the uh, position where it has to decide to stop it means that uh, if the uh, the vehicle is stopping before the targeted place it is the uh, brakes are very 100 percent efficient which uh, which provokes the people inside the vehicle to uh, feel an uncomfortable manner uh, or feel the jerking feel inside the vehicle so at the same time if the uh, vehicle stops ahead of the targeted uh, target distance uh, the brakes are less efficient such that uh, that uh, we need to see, uh, we need to highly concentrate on this uh, either the uh, either the vehicle is stopping before the target distance or stopping after the distance these are both are the uh, extreme scenarios of the brake system and ideal uh, good efficient braking system should stop the vehicle at the exact target distance Next, coming to the point is stopping time. The stopping distance and stopping time are directly proportional. Since as the vehicle uh, st as as the vehicle is getting stopped uh, in a in, a, in a optimum stopping distance, obviously the stopping time will also be reduced and it will be very uh, directly proportional to the distance. Then comes the hill assist. Uh, a, a good brake should be uh, capable of uh, holding the vehicle stationary on a uphill or downhill gradient. Since this is very uh, very uh, key factor, a very most important key factor of a good brake. Then comes the uh, anti fade characteristics. This will be uh, taken into a foundation brake criteria where uh, the brakes uh, come into uh, brakes brake liner come into a important factor where on a repeated application of the brakes the the uh, properties or the uh, efficiency should not uh, deteriorate uh, on a prolonged use. Uh, this, these are the four important key factors uh, 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 a good brake has to satisfy in order to uh, stop the vehicle in a very controlled manner and a safe manner. Then comes the uh, brake system for heavy commercial vehicles. Uh, actually, before going into the heavy commercial vehicle brake system, I'll just uh, simply classify the brake system and the brakes used in the heavy commercial vehicles. Uh, uh, actually, brake system is nothing but that uh, kind of brake system which is uh, which uses the source of energy. For example, the air brake system and the hydraulic brake system. And one more, uh, the other thing is that the foundation brake, which will be a disc brake or the drum brake. Today, uh, these will be two, these two combined together. We can say as a complete brake system for a uh, any vehicle. For example, if a passenger car uh front wheels will be equipped with the drum brake uh, disc brake which is which is uh, which come under the category of a uh, foundation brake the overall brake system which is in the passenger car will be a hydraulic brake system where the where the working fuel will be a uh, brake fluid of a uh, dot 3 or dot 4 will be uh, on a technical term will be seen so here in a heavy commercial vehicle uh, the working fluid for the braking system will be the air that is the compressed air and uh, when coming coming to the foundation brake it will be a drum brake in most of the cases but the way but vehicles uh, where the space constraint is not a major pro problem that they will be using disc brake at the foundation why pneumatic brakes are preferred in a heavy commercial vehicle over the hydraulic brakes uh, generally heavy commercial vehicles as per ri uh, more than 12 ton vehicles are classified as heavy commercial vehicles uh, uh, since the GVW, GVW is nothing but the gross vehicle weight, gross vehicle weight of a heavy commercial vehicle is more than 12 tons. The, the, the abundant amount of uh, braking force which is needed to uh, stop the vehicle in a very controlled manner can be provided only, only by the compressed air, that is the pneumatic air brake system. Uh, so it is directly, it is, it is. On a direct mean, it is uh, stating that the vehicle weight increases. Obviously, the braking force stop needed to stop the vehicle, uh, the optimum braking force needed to stop the vehicle is also increasing. So, braking force is nothing but the pedal effort uh, which we'll be giving, which is indirectly proportional to the uh, brake line pressure, which is uh, uh, brake line pressure is nothing but the air pressure or the hydraulic pressure. Here, uh, we are concentrating on the air pressure. Uh, 
then comes the how the mechanical how this air pressure is converted into a mechanical force and uh, uh, achieve I mean, and we are achieving it at the uh, brake drums so uh, most of the uh, heavy commercial vehicles here in the market will be equipped with a pneumatic air brake system uh, due to the many important factors like uh, first is the reliability uh, it is more reliable when compared to a hydraulic brake for a heavy commercial vehicle heavy commercial vehicle i am not saying the hydraulic brakes are, are less efficient and it is not a uh, uh, reliable but when coming to a heavy commercial vehicle the pneumatic brakes are very much reliable to the uh, compared to the hydraulic brakes next uh, next thing next major thing is that the air supply uh, here uh, i mean compared to the hydraulic brakes the uh, the hydraulic fluid has to be topped up the uh, over a periodic time uh, where it is uh, where, uh, when compared to the uh, where uh, coming to this uh, pneumatic brake, the air supply is unlimited. Then, uh, then next uh, key factor is uh, uh, minor leaks in a pneumatic brake system. That is the over of uh, air leakage in, uh, uh, in in valves or the coarse leakage or coarse kinking will not affect the overall performance of the vehicle. But uh, when coming to the hydraulic brakes, uh, the small leakage of fluid in the hose or the valves. Uh, will create a, a huge uh, problem for the uh, stopping of the vehicle and it also directly uh, implies on the safety of the people uh, who are traveling in the vehicle. Then, uh, as I said, first, uh, vehicle weight increases, the braking force is also increased. A large amount of braking force can be uh, generated in a pneumatic brake system since uh, we are using a compressed air. Generally, the brake fluid, which is oil, uh, brake oil, cannot be compressed, but the air which is available in the pneumatic brake system can be compressed to a uh, larger pressure of uh, more than 10 bar or 12 bar according to the uh, requirements of a uh, requirements based on the vehicle tonnage. And then this is the overall uh, scenario uh, of why the brakes, uh, heavy commercial vehicle is equipped with the pneumatic brake system. I'll just quickly play a small video of the uh, importance of air brake system and how it is work. Then I'll uh, quickly go through the uh, each and every component and the function. In this video, we're going to give you an introduction to air braking system. For larger vehicles, even a vacuum boosted hydraulic braking system could not give the braking effort required to stop the vehicle. A hydraulic braking system works well for cars and other light vehicles. But the greater braking effort required to bring a large vehicle to a controlled stop leads to air braking systems generally being fitted to heavy and commercial vehicles. The air braking system begins with an air compressor. This is driven by the engine and provides the system with the required air under pressure. To store the compressed air we have reservoirs. These storage tanks hold the air until it is required by the system. The compressor and the reservoirs make up the charging part of the circuit. To operate the braking system, the driver has two main controls. The first is a foot pedal, which the driver uses to control the service brakes, known in the air braking system as a foot control valve. The second is a hand operated lever and has a similar operation to a handbrake in a car. The driver uses this to control the secondary air that is required to overcome the power spring holding the brakes on. This control is known as the hand control valve. The foot control valve and the hand control valve make up the control part of the circuit. Finally, we have the actuators and the brakes. The actuators use air from the controls to actuate and release the brakes as required by the driver. At rest, with no air supplied to the actuators, a powerful spring provides a considerable force to the actuators, keeping the brakes applied. When the driver moves the hand control valve to the off position, pressure is sent to the actuator to compress the power spring, releasing the brakes. This pressure remains in the secondary portion of the actuator, all the while the hand control valve is in the off position. When the driver pushes the pedal on the foot control valve, it sends air to the actuator to make an application of the service brakes. When the pedal is released, the service air is exhausted and the brakes are released.
When the driver applies the part brake with the hand control valve, the secondary air is exhausted from the actuator, allowing the power spring to reapply the brakes. There are many other components within the air braking system to aid and control its operation, which we'll look at in other videos. Ah, I, I hope everyone saw the video. I think that there will be a... I think everyone has come to know uh, at least the basics of uh, what is an uh, air brake system and how it is functioning in a uh, heavy commercial vehicle and how the brake force is generated how, and how it stops the vehicle. So then, this uh, this is a very simple uh, brake layout in a, a very uh, uh, we can say a four by two truck, which is the axle configuration. Uh, first of all, I'll just go through uh, run through the uh, major components in a heavy commercial uh, the brake system pneumatic hand brake system. First comes the compressor. Actually, compressor is the uh, compressor provides the major uh, thing uh, the energy source for the uh, air brake system. Uh, it is uh, it is driven by the engine through the belt line. Uh, the engine to uh, engine to compressor driven ratio will be fifty percentage. For example, uh, if the engine uh, engine is uh, engine running RPM is uh, three thousand, uh, the compressor will be uh, running at thousand five hundred RPM. It generates the compressed air and it is and it provides the uh, uh, necessary uh, compressed air for the braking air brake system, uh, which is uh, which uh, helps to stop the vehicle in the uh, stop the vehicle. A compressor is designed to pump air into a reservoir, which results in the pressurized air. So next comes the air dryer, uh, which uh, uh, eliminate uh, which uh, the uh, compressed air provides the moisture content in the air. So the air dryer main function is to remove the uh, moisture content in the uh, 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 compressed air and only the dry air will be transferred to the reservoir is present in the uh, circuit. Uh, so next comes the air dryer uh, which uh, uh, removes the moisture content in uh, of the uh, moisture content in the compressed air which is uh, generated by the compressor. Uh, then the compressed uh, dry air which is uh, free from the water content is transferred to the reservoirs. Uh, the, there are two reservoirs in this circuit, uh, which is the primary and the secondary reservoir. Usually, uh, in a normal truck or a, uh, some multi axle truck, there will be four reservoirs where uh, each reservoir serves a purpose. Uh, first reservoir will be used for my primary circuit, which is the uh, which would be generally classified as the uh, uh, circuit for the front axle. Circuit. Then, the other circuit, other reservoir will be uh, taken care for the uh, rear axle circuit. Then the third reservoir will be taking care of the spring brakes, that is the park brake. Usually in a passenger car or a normal vehicle, the park brake will be a mechanical component which is which use the leverage to stop the vehicle. Then comes the fourth reservoir which takes care of the auxiliary or the accessory components in a vehicle. Uh, usually the in, um, in a heavy commercial vehicle, the accessory components like a horn, uh, or the uh, gearbox for a gearbox, the pneumatic uh, shift, lift, the pneumatic pressure is used to shift the uh, gears. And uh, for the exhaust brakes, they will they, be utilizing the air pressure. So these are some of the accessory components uh, for which the air pressure is needed. So uh, for a multi axle truck or a more than 4 by 2 vehicle, uh, the normal uh, reservoir will be uh, 4. So next comes the system protection valve. Uh, valve. Uh, I hope everyone can see the slide clearly, so I, I don't uh, have any problem in uh, saying the words. So next, the uh, system protection valve. Uh, the system protection valve uh, is directly connected to the air dryer. At the, uh, from where the compressed air will be transferred to the uh, reservoirs. The system protection valve is to, uh, its main purpose is to uh, supply the compressed air to the independent circuit independent circuits. If, uh, for example, if a front circuit fails, the circuit is switched off. That, the, that individual circuit will be switched off automatically. The other uh, circuits will continue to work in the same uh, pressure up to the uh, uh, opening pressure or the uh, settling pressure in a reservoir. Uh, usually, uh, uh, the system protection valve uh, uh, retaining pressure is 6.5 bar in any vehicle. Depending upon the valves which are used, 
uh, it changes the 6.5 bar uh, will be uh, changing uh, the maximum will be 6.8 bar so next comes the dual brake valve uh, the dual prop uh, valve is nothing but the foot brake valve which is used in the passenger vehicle uh, where the foot uh, the foot pedal uh, or the brake pedal will be directly connected to the dual brake valve uh, there will be uh, two connections come two connections coming from the reservoirs and two connections going to the uh, front axle uh, brake chambers and the rear axle brake chambers uh, and it will be it will be functioning independently based upon the uh, amount of uh, uh, force which is given on the brake pedal then comes the relay valve uh, relay valve major function is to accelerate or boost up the response time of a, a conventional air brake system uh, next comes the handbrake valve. Uh, handbrake valve is very common. Uh, I, I hope everyone has uh, uh, has uh, has heard this noise uh, that uh, 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 fl flushing noise from the compressed air which is getting exhausted whenever a truck truck driver or a bus driver used to halt the vehicle after uh, uh, traveling through a distance. This uh, exhaust noise is nothing but uh, which is uh, coming from this handbrake valve uh, valve operation. This, uh, this handbrake valve uh, exhausts the uh, compressed air which is filled in the spring brake actuators uh, to the atmosphere and uh, makes a uh, drum, uh, drum to get, uh, uh, get uh, attached to the liners and uh, holding the vehicle. So next uh, major, components, uh, major component is the brake chamber and the uh, spring brake actuator. Spring brake actuator is nothing but which I told, uh, handbrake valve, uh, uh, the compressed air which is filled in the exhaust, uh, uh, which is filled in the spring brake uh, side of the uh, uh, brake chamber will be exhausted to the atmosphere and it will be uh, functioning in the YC versa condition. I'll just uh, go through the uh, after explaining to you the brake chamber. Uh, brake chamber are nothing but the brake cylinders which are normally used in a uh, passenger car or uh, uh, any vehicle. Uh, brake chamber converts the pneumatic air pressure which is coming from the uh, uh, reservoirs to the mechanical force which is directly applied to which directly applies the uh, brake uh, the brake chambers are connected to uh, via a uh, push rod to the slack adjuster. The slack adjuster will be directly connected to the brake drum uh, via an S cam. The so, uh, slack adjuster movement uh, due to the brake pressure uh, from the brake chamber uh, expands the liner on the drum based upon the leading and the trailing shoe movement, uh, which is anchoring by which is anchored by a S cam mounted on the joint of the two liners so this will be the same function for the rear axle where uh, where spring brake actuators are located the, uh, the spring brake actuators are similar to brake chambers where it is divided into two halves the first half will be having the brake chamber which functions the normal uh, as a brake chamber uh, uh, the brake pressure coming to the brake chamber will push a, will push the slack adjuster through the push rod uh, the slack adjuster will uh, turn the uh, SCAM which is connected to, to it uh, and the uh, expands the uh, liner to the drums and the brakes are played. This uh, spring brake actuator will be have a uh, highly tensioned uh, spring inside it. On application of on uh, application of the handbrake valve, the uh, compressed air which is stored in the uh, spring brake side will get exhausted uh, to the atmosphere and the spring will be forced to move on the front and the slack adjuster uh, applies and the uh, uh, scam scam turns turns and uh, the liner get uh, liner pushes the drum push uh, push towards the drum to stop on release of the handbrake the pressure in the uh, in the hose will uh, fill the spring brake actuator and this will uh, in turn release the uh, uh, scam to the normal position and the slack adjuster will move towards the origin uh, origin position so here okay, this will be the function uh, first. The on pressing uh, the compressor will be fully charged and the reservoir will be fully uh, fully uh, filled uh, according to the system pressure. Generally, the uh, any for any vehicle, uh, the, for more most commonly the system pressure will be either eight bar or the ten bar system. Now most of the vehicles as after BS six are equipped with the ten bar system uh, based upon some regulations, but. Uh, in India, most of the vehicles are equipped with either the eight bar system or the ten bar system. So, uh, as per, as I said before, the compressor charges provides the compressor uh, compressed air. The air dryer uh, removes the moisture content in the thing. 
uh, module content in the air and the disk and it goes to the system protection valve and, valve and fills all the reservoir once the uh, system pressure of either either 8 bar or 10 bar is reached the compressor cut down cut out and this will be the uh, uh, end, uh, all healthy condition of a good uh, uh, air brake system without any leakage so on pressing the uh, foot pedal that is uh, which is which will be connected to the dual brake wall on pressing the foot pedal the air pressure from the uh, two blue color reservoir will come to will come near the uh, dual brake wall and it will flow through the hoses to the brake chambers on the uh, on the for the front axle and the rear axle uh, and it will uh, push the slack adjuster and apply the brake so this, is, this will be the uh, simple uh, working function of a pneumatic air brake system uh, for, sorry, a pneumatic brake system so next comes the uh, technical insights of a brake testing uh, uh, it is uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the critical test in a, uh, uh, for any vehicle is the brake test uh, which has to be very uh, safely and very uh, cleanly uh, tested so that uh, after the vehicles are homologated and uh, are released into the markets it should not create any uh, issues since uh, it, it it is uh, it is directly a lifesaver for uh, for any vehicle uh, and the passenger sitting inside there so some of the technical insights of the brake testing we can just run through the uh, 10, 10, 10 bulletin points which is very important on the brake testing first of all the temperature uh, the temperature i mean is that the both ambient temperature and the uh, temperature on the drum and liners should be maintained the ambient temperature should be between 15 to 45 degrees celsius which is uh, uh, i'll be telling the regulation and the standards in the coming slides and just uh, letting you know that what is the exact temperature should be maintained uh, while the, uh, testing this uh, all the uh, points will be are mentioned in the uh, um, uh, regulation which will be coming in the next slide i'll just uh, i'm just telling the values next the uh, uh, wind velocity wind velocity uh, is the uh, uh, it should not be very vigorous uh, while the brakes are tested it should be uh, less than or equal to uh, 5 meter per second next is the surface condition uh, there are uh, many surface condition where uh, the brakes are tested uh, one is the high surface condition, high friction surface, which is a dry asphalt, uh, normally our tar road, uh, which is uh, having a mu of coefficient friction of 0.8, and a uh, low mu, a low friction surface, which is uh, for passenger cars, it will be tested on a dry uh, wet asphalt and a uh, wet asphalt surface, which is uh, uh, which have uh, coefficient of friction 0.5. Uh, for uh, uh, heavy commercial vehicles. Uh, uh, the low friction surface will be generally a bit basalt uh, surface which have which have a uh, 0.3 mu this surface has to be uh, uh, surface friction has to be uh, maintained properly and the brakes has to be tested on the particular surface with the uh, correct uh, coefficient of friction next the instrumentation and the dam uh, devices uh, generally all the brake testing instrument has to be properly mounted inside the vehicle uh, and the data has to be trained data has to be run and all the data has to be properly stored uh, in the DAC devices and it should be uh, properly documented in for a future uh, purpose then comes the tire pressure this tire pressure also plays a very important role in brake testing uh, usually, uh, the manufacturers of a truck or any vehicle uh, uh, will be specifying the uh, tire pressure for a, a loaded vehicle and an unloaded vehicle. Uh, we can see it has a laden tire pressure and unladen tire pressure. It has to be properly maintained uh, in a vehicle before the testing. We have to. Uh, these are some of the checkpoints which has to be done before the brake test and during the brake testing. Also. Next comes the weight distribution. Uh, this 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 is one of the key factor which has to be uh, properly noted before you take the vehicle into the proving grounds or the test track for a brake test uh, weight distribution this has to be this is categorized into three things which has to be properly noted first is the front axle weight then then comes the rear axle weight then is the overall weight which is the gross vehicle weight this gv generally for a 4 by 2 truck the first two wheels uh, come under the front axle the uh, rear two wheels will be the rear axle weight 
and the overall fourth uh, overall vehicle will be uh, categorized into gvw for multi axle vehicles uh, depending upon the uh, uh, number of axles for the front and the number of axles in the rear will be properly uh, settled up and the overall gvw has to be calculated and this weight uh, will be specified in the uh, manufacturer's uh, details and the, this has to be properly maintained uh, this weight can have a, a small uh, deviation since the driver and the co-driver and all other uh, DAG devices instrumentation uh, has to be calculated. This have a small uh, liberation where plus or minus 15 percentage of the overall GVW of a vehicle is allowed since the driver uh, driver weight has to be added, co-driver weight has to be added, then the instruments. These, are, these all put together uh, should be uh, within plus or minus 15 percentage of the overall GVW. Then comes the uh, zero leakage. Uh, this is uh, this will be more applicable to a uh, pneumatic brake system. Since a zero leakage or a hundred percent healthy hundred percent healthy uh, brake system uh, uh, can have minor leaks on the uh, during the running, but during testing or uh, uh, evaluation or validation time, uh, that there should be a zero leakage, which should be ensured so that the hundred percent efficient. Uh, uh, data or results can be uh, can achieve uh, while pre testing. So, next is the consistent data measurement. Uh, what is uh, on, on performing the brake test? Uh, we'll be uh, testing many pra uh, parameters which will be I'll be coming to the next slides. Uh, next slide, but the data which has to be measured uh, will be the values, numeric values, which has to be in uh, bandwidth of a plus or minus five percentage. We should have to take three consistent readings uh, for the all data, and the three data should be in a bandwidth of plus or minus five percent. Then the vehicle dynamic behavior. Uh, since most of the, uh, the tests are, they, uh, are uh, taken in a proving grounds and test test tracks, uh, the dynamic behavior of a vehicle plays a very important role, which has to be very keenly monitored. Then the brake pedal effort, the brake pedal effort as per the regulation should be less than or equal to 70 kgs applied by the uh, driver. It, it, or we can say it as a, uh, uh, what to say, a panic brake which is will, will be applied on brake testing. Then the safety checks, uh, uh, some of the ma main safety checks are the, we have to uh, check the wheel bolts. Uh, load has to be properly hinged and it should be rigid and there should be no loose parts inside the vehicle all the uh, all the uh, all the people all the people in the sense and the driver and co-driver has to uh, has to be uh, has to fasten their seat belts while testing and uh, uh, the some other uh, safety checks has to be uh, uh, taken care before the vehicle is tested uh, before the brakes are tested and the proving then coming the uh, then coming to the brake testing parameters uh, on testing a vehicle will be uh, uh, first of all uh, for the first slide I told uh, stopping distance stopping time uh, uh, these are the uh, these are the four major uh, parameters which will be evaluated uh, when the brakes are tested first is the stopping distance this stopping distance uh, plays a very major plays an ma uh, important role when the vehicle are tested when the vehicle is tested and this graph which is uh, uh, seen here, uh, this is a very basic graph uh, which uh, which explains the uh, uh, importance of an engine with uh, engine and the brakes in a vehicle. Uh, similarly, uh, we have seen many advertisements in uh, for uh, for promoting the vehicles uh, zero to hundred um, hundred kph in six seconds uh, or uh, something like that for depending upon the vehicles. Uh, this uh, this is the acceleration power up or the pickup of any vehicle. Uh, which is uh, given by the uh, manufacturer during uh, uh, during vehicle uh, uh, in vehicle ads. So this is uh, as this is very much important for a vehicle to uh, pick up in uh, for speed up in uh, for a particular distance and the particular time. Uh, 